My name is Jill. I'm one of Tim's favoured Friday ladies. <laughs> I'm Pauline and I'm part of the Friday ladies, have been for the last, you know, 30 years. My name is Julie and I'm one of uh, Tim's Friday ladies. We meet every Friday because we all have the same appointments week in, week out. When you see someone every week and you've seen them every week for 20 plus years, they become like family. I mean, I've seen some of them through husbands dying, cancer, illness, you know, real tragedy in their lives. So if, if I feel I've given them something back and it's cheered their day up, then I'm doing my job really well. <laughs> These girls have been a support to me throughout my career. Um, they've followed me from pillar to post, from one salon to another. Wherever I've worked, they've come to me every Friday religiously. So they haven't supported me just in the last 18 months. They've supported me for the last 25 years. So I adore them, yeah. So my name is Sophia Hilton and I founded This Is Not Another Salon. And we're this really beautiful, accepting, safe environment for basically a lot of people that don't necessarily feel like they fit in to the rest of the world. We have had clients that like have come in with a piece of paper and written down what they want because they have so much anxiety that they can't speak what they want. If I'm there and this person doesn't want to speak or whatever, it's fine. You know, like you have your reasons and I'm just gonna do your hair. We're not in a good financial position as a salon and it's scary. It's really scary because we're doing a great job here and we're helping people, but we rely on people supporting us um, and we rely on people realising the value of what we do. Um, and I really, really hope that those people that have not come to the salon yet, I really hope they come and they see what we could do and how we can make them feel. Because I know it's worthwhile, not just for how they look, but just for their mind. When we actually heard that we were going into lockdown, we came in and we put everything in place um, to prepare for hibernation. I was very scared because I wasn't sure what future would hold. I wasn't sure how long this would be for and how long my business can go on. In the house, it was just me and the children. That was really tough, really, really tough. When I needed the space, I would just go out in the balcony and lock the doors outside and just have a little, a little cry. I kind of enjoyed the first couple of weeks of lockdown. You know, it was the first time I'd had time off for five years. But then I guess for me, that's when my ADHD symptoms really started to present themselves. You know, I started to obviously get a little bit down, but then for me, I guess that's probably maybe, I don't know if that's my personality or whether it's part of my condition. I didn't stay down for long. You know, I figured out what I could be doing. And, you know, for me, I realized that if you were doing charity work, you didn't have to stay at home um, on top of me wanting to help people as well. So it was kind of like, for me to do charity, it was really good for me. It was really good for my mind. It was so good to get out of the house and do something for someone else. Um, it gives you such a good sense of well-being. And I guess if the pandemic taught us anything, it's that, it's to be kind to each other. Uh, five years ago, he was brilliant because I went through chemo and lost all my hair. So he was brilliant with me because I used to still come in on a Friday because I didn't want my routine to change. Hairdressing is just a very small part of what I do. In, 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 that's what I feel, with my clients anyway. We love him. And I'm sure he loves us, so they were a pain in the bum sometimes. <laughs> I think at the start of the pandemic, it really impacted me um, mentally and physically because I wasn't sleeping on a the night. There was times that you were kind of thinking, well, how is this going to work? You know, how can a business survive for even two weeks without cash flow coming through the doors? That kind of level of stress lies heavy on you on a night. And there's girls here who've got babies and mortgages. So for me, it was paramount that they were looked after and that they felt protected, even though sometimes I didn't know the answers myself. People come in here for different reasons. You know, some people come in here because they have a hot date. Other people come in here because they have, for example, psoriasis or eczema or PCOS, you know, just the kind of thing that really affect their confidence. Um, I suddenly kind of had a lot of kind of hair growth on my face and it was a lot more than natural and it was very noticeable for I think other people and obviously when people were pointing it out to me it kind of uh, made me feel a bit 
no, I, I lost a bit of self-esteem there. The sugaring is a technique that comes from the Middle East. It's natural, it's vegan, it's just water, lemon and sugar. And, you know, Cleopatra used to be a fan. And back then, a hairless body was synonymous with wealth and prosperity. So you can imagine um, what people did. They want to get rid of all their body hair. Going in, I was very nervous. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was obviously very young and I was, you know, giving someone um, full control over my whole face. We're lucky we've got a job where we get to be actually tactile with people. This is something we don't really talk about very much, but uh, human touch is so important. And actually, COVID or no COVID, I'm happy I get to touch someone every day. Because sometimes I'm the only person that person has touched in weeks, if not months. That's a privilege. It doesn't really matter about money. The main thing is about service. And it's service that will make you sleep at night. It's service that you'll care about on your deathbed. It's service that will give you that sense of self-worth. You can only get it through caring for other people. And it's something that's really taken me, I guess. The first time I came here, it was when I still um, it was very early in the days when I started to understand more about myself. During the, the quarantine, I really came to an understanding of my sexuality, my gender and my, you know, my, my, my being. And it was the first time I really interacted with someone using, you know, new pronouns. And, and I really felt like, like at home. Like, it's like, I love this place. It's just <laughs> I hope that they, they go away feeling 20 times better than what they did when they came in. Not just physically, but mentally. Definitely for me. There's, there are times when you feel low or things happen, problems arise. And I can sometimes feel low when I come in. But I, when I've had my head and I've had a chat, I don't feel low going out. You know, it seems to raise my spirits. I think I'll be coming when I'm in a wheelchair, probably, or someone's pushing me. Well, hopefully, anyway, because there's one thing I've always wanted to keep is my hair and my teeth, really. Apart from, because what's the use of, you know, getting dressed up if you've got no hair or teeth? No. <laughs> For me, coming back to the salon has been amazing. Um, after the first lockdown, we really thought that it was game over and we really thought that we would have had to shut our doors. So I guess coming back, it's been like a new lease of life. You know, and it's just, it's really nice when you come into work and, you know, you just see that name in your diary and, and you know, it just changes your day and it's just that custom that you've been doing for five years. For me, it's like a balance of going to work and being creative and showing, obviously giving people something that makes them feel better about themselves, but also being a listening ear for customers that maybe don't have someone to talk to. The first time I went back to the salon and saw Tim, it was just going back to old times, going back 12 months, really. I thought, oh, we're almost back to normal. I think we've got to continue to live our lives and not just lose it all because of the virus, you know, because we've lost so much. Shops, everything, you know, I mean, it, I, I'm not going to like the world we're going to live in if that happens. When you go to a hair salon, it's more than just a haircut. You're supporting people that do more than just style your hair. They, they listen to people. Um, they're integral parts of the community that you know give back. So for me, if you're gonna look after anyone, go support your local hairdressers and your beauticians. You know, you're welcomed and made to feel special. Because after all, that's why you come to the hairdressers, isn't it? Because you want to feel special when you walk out, you know, think, great. You know, here we go for another week. Coming out, it was, I didn't even know how to explain. Like, I just felt like I just, it was like a miracle. Like, someone had kind of transformed my face. I genuinely felt like a new person. My skin was like glowing. I got loads of compliments. And I just felt super confident, like, literally straight after my appointment. Our clients bring us, like, a lot of joy, you know? Everybody's an individual and everybody has their story. So, you know, that I think makes, you know, working in the beauty industry so rewarding. The salon is a safe place and we're all completely clued up on how to keep you safe. And we're coming to the tail end of this now. So, you know, my, my advice to anyone or my request to you all would be, if you love your hairdresser, get back in the salon more often because we need you as well, definitely. 
The community has been absolutely amazing. Uh, we all thought of each other as a family and I mean you had clients buying gift vouchers. Gift vouchers we were closed. Why? Because they wanted to support you. They wanted to have some money in the bank for when you're open or for, for you to be able to pay these um, overheads. I think this death played a big role on my businesses being able to stay strong and, and, and be back on full force. If you can afford to go to your salon, like, please go. It's so important you support these. You have no idea how many calls I've taken from people's businesses collapsing. And most importantly, buy your retail from them. This is the number one thing I can say. It's a difference in two or three pounds for whether you can get a little deal on the internet here or there. Two or three pounds will stop your local salon collapsing. It makes such a huge difference. And if there's one thing I'd say to do, is please buy your products from us too. Get out there, support your local hairdressers and shops.